Hey guys, this is Vebhav. Hi, I'm Anul here. We're at the Makers Asylum in Goa. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the M1902 and taking yep. you through the assembly guide of uh, how to assemble and put this together. Right. Uh, we're going to walk through the different sub-assemblies and uh, tell you how to put them together. Do you, know what a, do you know what an oxygen concentrator is? I think so. I think it just gives out oxygen, right? Out of nowhere. And is then, it? out of nowhere. Like, how does it create oxygen? Yeah, so that's what we're going to talk <laughs> about today. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so we're, we're going to basically be taking air from the environment and concentrating it to make 95% pure oxygen. Yeah. So it's not like you can say, okay, here's a you know fistful of air and I have oxygen. No, that's not how it works. You got to have a bunch of stuff that pulls oxygen out of thin air. So let's walk through it. All right, folks. Here's uh, the first part of the assembly uh, process. We need to start with uh, with a frame that's going to hold all the parts together. That's the most uh, uh, kind of important part of the whole uh, assembly. But in some ways, also the most non-critical because you can do this in many different ways. Uh, because we are sort of prototyping and researching here, we have used an aluminum extrusion frame that helps us, you know, to, to uh, move things around and adjust the sizes to uh, to fit the parts that we have on hand as we go along. It only but looks easy. It looks easy, yeah. But um, honestly, when you start building it, that's uh, probably the most amount of time is going to go into getting this right. Yeah, getting it all aligned, getting it set up. Uh, if you miss something, you have to kind of, you know, rip it open, put it back together. So it takes a bit of a time. But once you get the hang of it, it's, uh, it's like, playing with mechano sets so not too difficult uh, but if you're going in for let's say a bigger build uh, uh, sizes or build numbers then you'd probably want a different kind of an enclosure so i'd say non-critical but important for sure all the documentation for the same is available on github you can go through that and uh, be able to cut this out into the right dimensions and put it together uh, we also have a quick time lapse showing how this is done. Yeah, we have the dimensions, we have a drawing that shows you how it goes together, and we have an assembly manual that shows you all the different uh, steps of getting from separate pieces to this uh, assembled structure. All right, cool. Let's move on. The next sub assembly that we want to talk about is the coils, the copper coils. Are they? Are they just? to make it look cool or do they have a real purpose in it? Well, these aren't springs for sure. These are hollow copper pipes that take in uh, hot air and uh, spit out cold air. How cool is that? Nice. Okay, so this is actually uh, split into two parts. One is the part that involves uh, coiling the coils and the other part is assembling this. Now, uh, coiling takes a fair amount of practice. Uh, we wasted a few coils getting to this kind of perfection. So you're gonna have to you know, be patient about this part. And uh, the coils have a hot end and a cold end. The hot end is usually at the top and the cold end is at the bottom because hot air rises up. So we want all the hot air from here being sucked out by the fans. Uh, your assembly could uh, vary a bit, but essentially you need to make sure that the coils have the uh, connection fittings for the hot end and the cold end based on how you're making your fittings. But in our case, we have uh, male fitting here and push fittings here for the cold end. So basically, eventually you will have your compressor being connected to this part. Yeah. So your air is going up into this part, somewhat like this. This is how it looks. So you have your air coming in from the compressor, going right at the top of this, coiling all the way down, cooling as it goes down, and then coming out of here. On the top, you have two uh, fans that are blowing air downwards through the coils onto the compressor heads, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, this is part of a different sub-assembly, which, which we'll talk about a little bit. Uh, this is where we uh, are basically attaching this to the oxygen sensor. sensor. So that takes you 
for the cooling coil sub assembly. Moving on to the fans and the solenoid. So, do you want to walk through? Sure. So, uh, for the next uh, sub assembly, which is about uh, the cooling fans and the solenoid, uh, or the solenoid walls, is that over here you have two cooling foils which are actually pointing directly towards the compressor. So like that's so. how it is pointed uh, once it's on the frame. So they are actually pointing, blowing air directly towards the compressor heads. Yeah. And this, which is pointed right below, is the solenoid valve, which is controlling uh, the flow of air in and out of the seats, yeah. which we'll talk about towards the end when we talk about the assembly. But basically, the uh, this part of the solenoid valve is the, the outlet, outlet. Uh, and the input. The Rather outlet that goes to the sieves. Right, the outlet that goes to the sieves. And this is the inlet where the main air is coming in through the compressor. Yeah. So the air is going through the moisture separator and through the compressor and coming in right here. And this is where the outlet is, which is going directly into the sieves. And these two are the silencers where when uh, the PSA Exhaust. system is uh, flipped and it is exhausting air, through the sieves, the air is actually exhausted out through the silencers to sort of dampen the noise. Yep, so the silencers help reduce the, uh, the sound of the machine. Uh, we also have these two coils which uh, turn the solenoids on and off, so they are wired up. Uh, we have a connector here where the compressor wires come in, so that's a connector for the uh, compressor. And uh, finally, we have the wiring for the fans that goes to the electronics uh, sub-assembly. So that's the the whole uh, cooling coil assembly, the uh, cooling fan assembly. Uh, we have some laser cut uh, grills here, but you can use a stainless steel grill or whatever is handy here to keep uh, this protected. It's out of the way. Next, we're going to talk about the compressor. Now that over there is a 2.5 horsepower compressor that technically pumps out 300 LPM at zero bar pressure. Yeah. But as the pressure increases, the LPM sort of start dropping. And that is something that you will figure out. Uh, that is something that you'll get from the manufacturer who, is, uh, who you bought the uh, compressor. compressor from. It's more like a curve. And as it stops, uh, as the pressure starts rising, the LPM of the compressor or the flow rate of the compressor starts falling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this one is a fairly uh, robust uh, mounting mechanism. You need to make sure your base plate is fairly uh, thick and heavy. Uh, also use as many mounting attachments as you can so it doesn't kind of uh, come loose. Uh, the, the compressor always has a capacitor. There's a diagram uh, shown on the uh, body of the compressor over here that tells you which wires go to the capacitor and which go to the power supply. So that's the supply for the uh, compressor. Uh, these are the inlets. These are inlet baffles that act as some kind of uh, uh, noise reduction elements. Otherwise, it gets too loud. So we need to have these. Uh, these are the outputs. Once the air gets compressed, it becomes fairly hot. Uh, so these tubes have to be rated for uh, uh, high temperature rating. I think these are 75 or 120 degrees. Yeah. Something like that. But yeah, the the higher temperature they can withstand, the better. The compressors are oil free as well and that's yeah. very very important because uh, any oil through this entire system of oxygen concentrator is not good because technically you're breathing this air right or high concentrated oxygen so you don't want any sort of oils coming in plus oil is also combustible with high high levels of oxygen and oil can combust and you don't want that as well in the system so um, that's one of the reasons why we're using oil free compressors over here. Selesh, let's go inside and fit it in this match. Alright, 
Next up, we have the electronics Thank you. and the front panel subassembly. An old. Yep. I'm going to help you. How this wizardry works. Okay, this looks like a bit of a mess, but it's again in two parts. This part holds a lot of the electrical items. This is the main power supply. That's the uh, 24 volt DC power supply that runs everything on this machine. Uh, we have the main microcontroller here. That's the Arduino Nano. Uh, we have a kind of a buck converter that takes 24 volts and makes it low voltage for your microcontroller. And uh, we have a relay card that turns on and off the various uh, solenoid valves and stuff like that and the compressor. Uh, we also have a sensor for measuring ambient temperature and ambient humidity. Uh, this could be non-critical really, you don't need it. Another important piece of equipment we have here is this uh, pressure switch. That's uh, kind of important because if for whatever reason there is a blockage within the air path of your system and the compressor pressure builds up, that could cause uh, some serious issues. So this one measures basically pressure and cuts off the compressor if it crosses a certain limit. So it's quite a nice uh, safety device to have on your system. Uh, this one is the low pressure regulator. So this is before the final oxygen output of your system where you're controlling the flow rate or the LPM of your system. And on the other side of this plate, we have this big huge contactor that uh, turns on and off the compressor. Now, this one's kind of industrial grade, but you could also possibly use a, a suitably rated uh, relay in, uh, in place of a contactor. So that's the intermediate uh, electronics plate that is also coupled to the front panel, which has several elements. We have the display that shows the various parameters, oxygen concentration, uh, flow rate, temperature, humidity, and so on. Uh, we have a button here that turns on and off the compressor. Uh, we have the flow meter. Uh, these are the input mains power elements. We have a switch to turn it on and off, a fuse for protection, an emergency button for you know quickly shutting things off if something goes wrong, and an hour counter, which is uh, kind of useful to know how long your machine has run since uh, you switched it on. So, this is a cumulative counter with retention, so it doesn't forget uh, how much the machine has run. And uh, there's no way to reset it from the front, so it's kind of safe. You can't it's accidentally like, set it to zero by mistake. Like one of those car odometers back in the day, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, something like that. So, uh, that's about it. I'm going to move this out of the way. Yeah. And I will bring this into the picture. This is one more little wizardry that happens into the system. This guy is uh, an essential component, especially if you're in uh, the tropical uh, climate areas of India and other parts of the world. Uh, this is not really part of most oxygen concentrators because uh, they weren't ever meant to be running in the field rather. So what this one does is that it removes the moisture from the air before it enters the seam. So uh, the way, uh, think of it like as a simple uh, device that's in between the compressor and the sieves uh, before the solenoids so that it's removing as much of the uh, water from the air as possible and collecting it into this one chamber right here. And it also has an auto drain so when it comes to a certain point this sort of drains out and starts dripping water, sort of like your air conditioners. Yeah, uh, so this part is important because if you remember we talked about the cooling coils. Now, once the, the air cools down in the cooling coil, the moisture there condenses into water. And uh, if you don't remove it using this, it goes straight into the sea. Right. And, and that's what that. messes things up. So. Most machines have cooling coils, but they don't have a moisture separator, which kind of defeats the purpose because then you have all the water and the water vapor and the, the humidity entering the sieves and 
uh, messing up the zeolite. And the zeolite loves water. Yep. Just as much as it loves nitrogen and it doesn't let it go, it also loves water. So what that means is first it's going to absorb all the water and then the nitrogen. So if it continuously keeps absorbing a lot of water, that means that over time it's just going to become like a cake and reduce its nitrogen absorption capacity. Yeah, your efficiency drops down, you have a, a situation where your machine works but there's no oxygen at the output. Or it keeps dropping slowly. Yep, yeah, as the time goes. So we're what we're going to do next is that uh, yeah, we have uh, selection uh, on Monday, and then we'll work on this part to put it all together. I'll have an extra camera with me so I can show you a little close up as to what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, first up, so Anul right now is uh, ready the wires. What he's trying to do right now is he's connecting the wires to the fans and the solenoid. This is the main wire that's coming in this from is power, right? This is the main power, not the fan and the solenoid. This is 230 volts from the outside. Yeah, give it a tug to make sure it's uh, anchored properly. Uh, let's take this. We're going to put it from this side. We're going to bring this out here. Alright, so that's kind of fitted, that was easy. Next up, let's uh, fit the cooling coils. That's the next part of the assembly. So here's our uh, cooling coil assembly with the fans and the oxygen sensor and all of that. Uh, this part faces out, so I'm gonna put it here. Be tricky depending on how you but yeah once you've wriggled it around a bit you should have it in position like so we got a hook up next we're uh, connecting the comp compressor to the cooling coils so I'm just going to try and show you what's happening over here. Selesh is uh, currently... Make sure you tell us about the direction in which to wind the Teflon. Yeah, because yeah, there's a winding the Teflon. Do you want to go in which direction? The direction in which you want to thread the nut. Exactly. You want to put that in the direction of which you're going to thread the nut. Just to make sure that it auto tightens yeah. instead of coming loose when you are tightening the pipe. To the cop coil. Yeah. Uh, and there we go. That is the Teflon. Okay, so we have a lot of things in place. Uh, next up, we are trying to uh, see if we can wiggle in the two panels and get them fitted over here. So, all right. This is where uh, Selesh comes in. Selesh, let's go. Fit karte. Okay, now we up today. So, uh, Salish is going to climb up so we can get a better Pelayas uh, sensor. Right. Up is go. I'm not Pelay is called a lot. Compressor guy, right? Either side or OB. Either side. Okay. 
Okay, so at this point we have uh, almost everything installed in here except for the two sieves and the search tank which we will install at the very end. Uh, next step is once you get here is uh, to do it in two steps. First finish up all the pneumatic wiring. So all the pipes that need to go from one place to the other and then finish off the electrical wiring. So uh, make the interconnection, connect the fans, uh, connect the valves, uh, connect the front panel to the uh, PCB here, uh, connect the mains power and the compressor, these two wires. So that's what we're going to be doing next over the next couple of minutes. Okay, uh, chill up, sorry. Okay, so we have the wires coming from the solenoids, uh, the left and right, they're both uh, being brought out here. And uh, we're going to hook it up to these uh, relays over here. So, Salesh is going to do that. If you have solenoid valves that have indicator LEDs in them, then make sure you check for the polarity before you wire things up. Otherwise, the valve will work, but the LEDs won't show up, so. switch, we have a mains power switch, we have a fuse and uh, from there it goes to the, the power supply that runs the 24 volts through which most of the uh, elements on this uh, machine work. Except for the compressor, almost everything else is 24 volt DC. Uh, there's some amount of uh, wiring required here for which you need to refer to the electrical diagram in the assembly manual. But that shows you how to wire up the power supply, the electronics, the contact over here. There's a power counter here. So how to wire that up, the switch fuse and the uh, emergency switch, stuff like that. With that done, the next step is uh, to connect up all the pneumatics. Nice. So the from, compressor is connected directly to the uh, cooling coils. coils. Now that the air is cool, it's going to go from here right to uh, the back into uh, uh, into a single line directly into the moisture separator. So, so we will be using this guy, which is uh, one is two software uh, converter. Y converter. A Y converter. Pressure switch. That was pressure switch, which is basically going to cut off uh, the entire uh, the compressor in case there is too much of uh, there is excessive pressure, more than 
four or five bar depending on your system we've set it up to about six bar so if our system goes beyond six bar or there's pressure inside this entire system over six bar we will the uh, compressor will directly cut off then yeah. i'm going to add another tube right after this which is going to go into uh, the uh, what do you call that the moisture separator, moisture separator. so is pushing it? this back straight oh. through I know it's gonna grab that and I'm gonna make this connection from here into the pressure switch and I know it's right now connecting uh, that to the moisture separator to the inlet of the moisture separator from the inlet of the moisture separator now the air is gonna come back again and it's gonna go into the wall as an input once it goes into the wall it's gonna go into each of the seals so one line Heading in from there. Yep. All right. You want to connect so, the other one? So this one. Actually, maybe I think it's this one. Or this one. Uh, could be this one. Oh. All right. Get to the inlet first. So it's going directly into the inlet, which is right here, of. Uh, uh, the wall that is connecting to the output of the moisture separator which is logical right you are removing the water and then putting it into the seams via the solenoid wall uh, the inlet is on the top of me oh okay. sorry oh. blooper blooper inlet goes into the top so the inlet of the solenoid is on the top next to the uh, silences and that's where it's going okay I'm gonna push it in yeah. all right okay once that is done just make sure it's uh, nice and tight uh, and it doesn't like slip off post that the outlet of the wall the sunlight wall which is right about over here the <laughs> excuse me the outlet of the solenoid wall is directly going to go. We'll fix that later. Which we will put at the end. But I'm just keeping them over here because that's where this one is going. The output of the seals is going to go into this. So I'll actually make that through connection. that Y connector. I'll make that connection also ready. So this oh. is the output of the seal. This is the input at the bottom. Uh, to know exactly how to pack a sieve and all the other details about how to prepare your sieves and what is inside this, check out the sieve video uh, and the documentation over there. That's it. What about that the output? Bleeds out to the atmosphere. Okay, this part is just going to bleed out to the atmosphere, which is fair. We are wasting a little bit of oxygen over here to be able to capture and understand how much oxygen is going out. Uh, this part is now going to go into the output flow which regulator. is the flow regulator right in the front so we'll connect that now so let's take it from down there and then okay this one is an artificer so i don't need that uh, You can also easily follow the pneumatic diagram and figure this out. This part is pretty straightforward when you have it opened up. And then when you're trying to put it inside your machine, you'll know exactly what goes where uh, once you have the oxygen concentrator working.